Okay, hello, this is another demo video uh, for the Anytone uh, ATD868 UV. Uh, today we're going to cover installing the software and updating the firmware on the radio, kind of step one. Uh, so the very first thing we're going to do is install the drivers for um, the COM driver uh, to connect to the computer. Um, so they have this on Connect Systems website. Um, there's three pieces of software, well, four actually, you're going to need to download. Uh, the first is the CPS cold plug software. Uh, the second is the actual firmware file, which is version 2.17 right now. Uh, and then you will need the firmware update program, which is version 1.02. And then the other file you need is down here, either the 64-bit or 32-bit driver. Uh, for 99% of you, it's going to be the 64-bit driver. Uh, you're really going to only need the 32-bit driver if you're using a really old OS like XP or or something, but for anything Windows 7 or newer, you're pretty much going to have the 64-bit driver. Uh, so first, these are the same exact files that we just downloaded here. I just have them already saved. Uh, so the very first thing you're going to want to do is install the driver. Uh, these need to be run in administrator mode. So what you're going to do is right-click on the driver and go to Run as Administrator. And it'll give you a little security prompt. And go through here and you just hit Install. Okay. And then at this point, you're going to go through and plug in your radio. And it will take a second to recognize it. And under Device Managers, under Ports here, you should see it listed as GD32 Virtual Com Port. Now, for some reason, on my system, on my have a laptop and a desktop I do this on, sometimes it doesn't start properly. All you have to do is sometimes either unplug the cable from the radio and plug it back in, or unplug the cable from the computer and plug it back in. Um, plugging it from the radio usually works for some reason. I don't know why. It's usually fixes it most of the time. If you notice this, that's why I usually check in Device Manager just to see that it's showing up properly, because if you open the program, it will not be able to communicate if it has a little yellow X on it. It means there's something funny going on. Um, it might just be my version of Windows or something because I've been using it on the latest uh, Windows 10 build. And I think I did see some people say there were some problems with it. Uh, but it's simple to fix, just unplug and plug the cable from the radio. Uh, so now that we have the driver installed and my radio is connected, we're going to go through and install the Xcode, uh, QX code uh, firmware update program. Uh, so we'll just simply run through the install process. You can pretty much just leave everything as is. Uh, the name of the program is QX Code Pro, and we'll just cruise through these. And when you're done, you can actually launch it. Uh, oh, it needs to be run as administrator, so I'm going to go through my program lists. Uh, Q, QX Pro. And you're going to want to right-click on that and go to More, Run as Administrator. Uh, if you have a desktop shortcut, you can do the same thing. Just right-click it and click Run as Administrator. For whatever reason, they coded this where it needed to run with elevated privileges. So go through and run that. Uh, and then the other thing is the firmware file. This is the firmware file here that I already downloaded. We're just going to extract it. You might have um, Windows built-in program. I have a few different programs called 7-Zip um, and WinRAR that can extract it. And these are the actual firmware files here. Uh, so you're going to put your radio in program mode. Uh, you do this by turning off the radio and then holding down the little orange button on the top, uh, P3, or I think S3 or P3, whatever it's called. And while you're holding down the button, turn the radio back on. I didn't quite do it right the first time. Oh, I'm sorry. You actually have to hold the uh, push to talk button and that little P3 button, the orange button at the top, and then turn the radio on. And when you do that successfully, you'll actually see a red light blinking on the radio. Uh, that means that it is in uh, download modes for, for firmware updates. So we're going to go through Open Update File. Actually, first we're going to make sure that it's connected and it's showing up. It is showing up. I'll go to Update for Firmware File. And this will also note this is COM3, and this shows up as COM3 as well, too. Update the file. And we're actually already in that folder with the firmware files. We'll just select that file, Open. And then we're just going to go through and write, write to radio. Okay. 
and it's going to go through and is updating the firmware. If you look on your radio, it has a solid red light while it is updating on radio. And we'll just wait for that to complete right now. Once this is set, it's usually a good idea to completely reset the radio back to factory settings and reload your code plug if you had previously programmed this. Uh, it's not required, but it's usually a good step just to clear the radio's memory after a firmware upgrade. And then you can program again in CPS software. So that's that. We now have an updated radio. So if you want to reset your radio, which I'm going to do right now, is you turn the radio back off and you hold push to talk and the button immediately below that that has one bar on it and you turn it on at the same time. It will then say initialize radio and this is going through and factory resetting the entire radio back to stock, uh, clearing all memory from it. And it's currently asking me for the date and time and everything. It's basically just like you turn the radio on for the first time. So now I have a completely blank radio with the latest firmware ready to go. And it's showing up here in my computer still. Uh, so now we're going to install the cold plug software. Uh, so this is the cold plug software setup file that I downloaded previously. I'm just going to extract that file and run the setup. Now, defaultly, for some reason, for me, it defaults to D drive because I have multiple drives on my computer, so I'm just going to change this to C and I want to install it in there. Uh, you can leave the default settings depending on what it shows up as. Usually, just C is fine. Um, and we're just going to go through and have it do its thing. And that's it. And you can just go through and open up the code plug software. Now, this is a blank code plug uh, that you can program to the radio. And I already have a preset. Uh, code plug that I have saved for, that I made previously that I'm going to open and then I'm just going to write to the radio. Uh, you can also go through using my other tutorial videos and actually create your very own code plug uh, but I already have one made so I'm just going to go through and write it to radio. And you're going to say OK to this and f because it's the first time you're flashing the radio if you have previously imported the DMR mark database you're going to want to check this contact list button uh, if you've already done this, you do not want to check that again because it's a long time to write that database. So I can go through and hit OK. And now it is writing. It says PC mode and is writing the radio data. Oh, failed connection. That's interesting. Let me try. Okay. I just uh, turned my radio on and off, and I believe it should go through and program now. Sometimes you have to go to set and go to set com port, and it will pick up the radio from there. Like, see, oh yeah, I just reset the radio, and this does not show up properly. So I'm just going to unplug the cable from my radio, plug it back in. It is showing up properly, so I'm going to set set com port. It picks up three. I'm going to write my radio data. And I've noticed sometimes with this version of the code plug software 1.17, it does this thing where it locks up for a little bit before it actually writes data to um, the radio. It does not do this on my laptop, but it does do this on my desktop system. Uh, it does eventually go through and displays the progress bar for writing. Uh, you just got to give it a few seconds. Let it sit here and do its thing. Yep, there we go. And now it's writing the data. Uh, so this process will take actually a couple of minutes, but that is the basic process to update and install the code plug software. Uh, you can watch the other videos on how to create code plugs uh, and do other things with the radio.